<sighs> you know, it's such a simple, routine act of everyday life, opening and closing a window. Yet I'm not really sure how or why this window glass started out as a heap of sand. So how do you go from sand to a perfectly clear window? Are you still here? <laughs> the story of windows starts here, way up here, 60 feet off the ground in Carlisle, Pennsylvania at PPG. These are giant, massive silos that hold the key ingredients to glass. The main one, sand. Every day, 800 tons of it are fed into the building here and then mixed with two elements critical to the manufacture of window glass. Soda ash and lime, or sodium carbonate and calcium carbonate. They lower the melting point of silica sand and alter its basic molecular structure. These chemicals soften the glass. They make it easier to melt. They terminate the silicon oxygen chains and make a more manageable glass to work with. And that soda, lime, silica glass lies at the heart of every window. Now, all of our raw materials have been mixed together and dumped into tanks like these, where it's a cool, low 3,000 degrees. It's actually hotter than molten lava. And it will take three days for a single molecule of sand to get from this point all the way to the other end of the factory, where it actually starts to resemble a sheet of glass. All right, so we're wearing this protective garment for a reason, right? Right. We're wearing Kevlar gloves, fire retardant. We're jackets. dressed like big oven mitts. Right. Yeah, it's pretty hot where we are, but it's going to get a lot hotter in a second, right? right? Yep. So let's rake. Steve Anderson and I have to rake this batch quickly. The goal? Well, don't let the rake melt first and spread out the mix to reduce air pockets that might form. Yeah. I do we're pulling that whole raft over to the wall. Yeah. It's like taffy. Yeah, it's just like that. It doesn't take long for the batch to start looking less like sand and more like an overflowing volcano. The only way to see this river of glass is through these polarized metal masks. Without them, your vision will be, well, gone. There, inside that shiny surface on the bottom, that is liquid glass. For 10 hours, the molten mix is superheated behind thick walls to allow gas to bubble up and out. Bubbles drive glassmakers nuts. After all, nobody wants to look out a window you can't see through. There is only one way to create plate glass without bubbles, and more importantly, flat on both sides. If a window isn't flat, it'll distort your vision, like a wrong pair of glasses. But making flat window panes is hard. And it used to be done by blowing giant glass bubbles, cutting them open, and laying them flat before they solidified. But they didn't end up perfectly flat. So since 1959, glass has been made by pouring molten glass on a river of liquid tin. The surface of any vast, undisturbed liquid is flawlessly flat. Tin ingots are melted down, creating that perfectly flat surface. The glass pours onto the tin and immediately begins to cool. Tin and glass don't mix. Like oil and water, the lighter glass floats on a denser tin. And the result is a material, a system where the liquid glass and liquid tin start at high temperature at one end of this giant river, and they cool. They're cooled deliberately until at the end, the tin's still liquid, but the glass is solidified. Compared to glass, tin's melting point is low. By the time it reaches this stage of the assembly, the glass hardens, floating on top of the molten tin like driftwood on water. Still very hot, as in 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit hot, the glass moves down the line in one long continuous sheet. It stretches a quarter of a mile, and because of its length and temperature, it's surprisingly elastic and strong enough to really beat on. This glass, almost as hard as you want, and you won't break that glass. It's extremely strong and it's pristine. Steve, I, I think you've actually pr proved your point there. Yeah. So from here to there, you need to bring it down about 100 degrees? About 100 degrees, and that's why we have such a long uh, cooling conveyor is to allow it just to cool down naturally. Yeah. A robot then cuts this long ribbon of glass into slabs that run about 12 feet across. These long, pieces of glass have been cut, and in a moment, they'll be 
packaged and then shipped to their distributors where they'll be turned into windows. To make windows, we haul glass down the road a ways to a window factory called Vywinco in Morgantown, Pennsylvania, where on average, 400 sheets of plate glass stream in all day, destined to become window panes. Working with this stuff can be very dangerous. Now this is kind of like Kevlar? Yes, this, so is, that this is? is Kevlar material. This is the same stuff they use in bulletproof vests. Yes, yep. When you're Good. pulling them off the table, you pretty much, that glass is right at your waist, okay. right at your, your leg area, so we want to make sure that's protected. Always put your Kevlar sleeves on first. Andy, dare I ask, has anyone ever been cut? Yes. Okay, I had no idea that Dickie was making a comeback. Lou, suit up, my friend. You got to put it on. That's it. So you got your Dickie on, you got your Kevlar sleeves, and you really are kind of ready for a kind of a Liberace thing in Vegas. It's nice, with a little Michael Jackson. It's very impressive. Well, so are you. Coming up, we make our window, and one that can weather a hurricane. It really does hold.